coming off vacation, you have great family time. You always look forward to preparing for the challenges of another season. Uh, we've had a really good off season with our team. Uh, we had a good summer with our players. Um, and um, I think our team has made improvements and progress in you know, a lot of areas, whether it's physical development, attitude development, um, and you know, trying to develop a, a mindset that will allow us to have good team chemistry you know, in the future. But you know, as we always do, it's kind of like here we go again uh, in making predictions about how young people, uh, adolescents, uh, will perform in the future. Uh, and, you know, so that's why we play the games. That's why we have a season uh, so that we can sort of see how we grow and develop and, you know, how the team develops uh, sort of uh, all the things you need to develop on a team, uh, the togetherness, the positive energy and attitude, the, the you know, people being responsible for their own self-determination, um, the work, uh, preparation, uh, ability to overcome adversity, pride in performance that, you know, make the team, uh, allows the team to be able to play with the consistency you need to be successful for an entire season, especially in the SEC, which is a very challenging league. But I think it's also more difficult than ever um, to sort of predict, um, you know, how your team is going to develop in all these areas because, we have more turnover, you know, on rosters um, in terms of how do you create a sense of um, object constancy, you know, which we all strive for in our life, sense of belonging, uh, sense of family, uh, sense of consistency and what's coming next and, you know, what the challenges are, you know, who I am, where I'm going, how I'm going to get there. Um, and. These things are all really critical factors in developing, creating an identity uh, personally, uh, individually for players, as well as, you know, for a team. And I think the more turnover you have, you know, on your roster, um, probably the harder it is to predict, you know, how those things actually happen. Um, I think it's, you know, also probably because of a lot of the changes that uh, we have in college football as we move forward. Um, it's also very, very important to stay focused on, you know, what do you need to do to have a program that creates value for players and their future in terms of their personal development, um, their academic uh, development, uh, ability to develop a career off the field, which really prepares them for their future after football and how that can they develop a career, you know, as a football player. So all these things contribute to how players can be more successful in life. And I still think, you know, the focus needs to be on uh, how do we continue to be able to have the kind of program that's going to help players develop, you know, value for their future, which is why we all went to college, all of us, uh, me included, all of you. Uh, and that's with the changes, we want to make sure that we sort of stay focused on the things that are most important for college student athletes. You know, the players that we have here, um, you know, Bryce, Will, uh, Jordan Battle, uh, have all represented our program in a first class way. I think they've represented the university in a first class way uh, and the conference. Um, you know, all these guys are on track to graduate in December, uh, which we're very proud of the academic uh, standard that we've been able to maintain in terms of graduation rate. I think we're in the top three in the country in APR. Um, these guys have provided good leadership, you know, for our team. Uh, they've worked hard. Uh, they're the right kind of people. They've got the right stuff. Uh, they also have, they're very talented players. Um, but the challenge is, is, you know, are the players on our team all going to buy into um, the principles and values and the standards of the organization, which these guys have done a great job of uh, demonstrating, uh, so that we can create the kind of identity that will create the kind of consistency and performance that we need to have a successful team. Um, so mindset is really, really important to that. Uh, leadership, which these guys have done a great job of providing, uh, is also very important to that, but it's also, 
you know, how did the other people on the team sort of buy into uh, the leadership um, that had been provided? Uh, and, you know, that's always a work in progress uh, with new players in the organization, new players on the team. Um, so we have challenges on our team. I mean, we had seven players drafted, you know, two first round draft picks and um, some very, very good players at wide receiver uh, and uh, other positions that, you know, will be difficult to replace. I think we've had 113 players drafted in the last 14 years and 41 first round draft picks. So very proud of the fact that we've done a good job of creating value for players at the next level. Um, but it'll be a challenge for us to re replace the skilled players lost, uh, two great receivers on our team last year. Uh, we've got some significant challenges in replacing, you know, some offensive line people, uh, which, you know, Bryce Young is a great player, he's a great leader, he's a great quarterback, uh, obviously. Uh, but quarterback is also a position that may be one of the most difficult positions in all of sports to play if you're not surrounded by good people. Uh, so the challenge for us is to make sure that we do an outstanding job of developing the players around him so that we can continue to be a very productive offensive team. You know, defensively, I think we've got seven starters back. But again, the biggest challenge is going to be, you know, how do we replace the corners that we lost? Um, because, you know, corner is probably the one position that puts the greatest restrictions on what you can do on defense. Um, so that, that's going to be a significant challenge for us as well. I do think we have good specialists, so we should be good at special teams. I'm really pleased with the new special teams coordinator, Coleman Hutzler, that we have. He's done a good job. The players have bought into it, uh, which is always important on special teams. And from a staff standpoint, you know, this is the first year in a long time we've had both coordinators, continuity in both coordinators, which I think is, you know, probably a, a you know, important thing for us uh, and the new coaches that we have uh, brought in uh, to replace coaches on our staff have, you know, fit in extremely well. Uh, they made a positive contribution in the relationships they've been able to develop with players um, and the energy and enthusiasm and new ideas that they brought to the organization. So we're very, very pleased with the, you know, staff that we have right now in terms of how they can contribute to developing you know, our team. Um, you know, I'd like to thank you all uh, for all that you do to create interest, you know, in college football. Um, there's a lot of self, uh, positive self-gratification that players gain from uh, the things that you do, uh, which I think, you know, college football is a great game, uh, tremendous interest uh, on a national level to, you know, see how these players develop and see, you know, how, um, you know, the competitive balance is uh, something that, you know, fans and uh, people that watch college football are always interested in. And um, I think you, got, you, you all have done a really good job of, you know, creating a circumstance that is very positive for our sport. And, you know, I certainly, we certainly thank you, you know, for that. So any questions? Thank you, Coach. If you have a question, raise your hand. Aliyah, Bailey, and Kiera will get to you. Again, if you could stand, if you're able, uh, that will help us identify uh, who's asking the question, and then we'll go from there. Again, please state your name and affiliation. Okay, we're going to start, Coach, over here on my left, right here in the middle, second row, Bob. Uh, hey, Nick, how you doing? Doing Bob, great, thanks. Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I, I don't know if you noticed this. It stopped raining right, right before you, you came up, so I don't know if, if you had control over that or not. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I was, as, as far as, as Will and Bryce, have you, can you think of another team where you've had such elite guys on each side of the ball? And what's it like having two guys back that, that are so good, arguably, you know, the best, best in the country? Well, I, 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 I don't like to compare players, but um, to have two players that makes such a significant impact on our team as those two guys. Uh, I don't recall ever having a circumstance like that. We've had some great impact players, but um, never one on this on offense, one on defense of you know the caliber that these guys have been able to play uh, on a consistent basis. But I think 
probably bigger than that is the impact that they have on the players around them. Uh, these guys set a great example. Um, they're uh, players that other people on our team can emulate in a positive way because of the example that they set. Um, these guys are very serving to their teammates in terms of, you know, they really do care about helping other people for their benefit. Um, so these guys have not only been great players, they've contributed from a leadership standpoint uh, probably as significantly as uh, any leaders that we've had, uh, and we've had some really good leaders in our program and our organization. So um, really excited about having these guys on our team. You couldn't ask for two better people um, to, um, you know, I've always said that when the best players on your team are really good people with great attitude and great mindset, um, it's really helpful to develop in the kind of team chemistry that you need to um, have a successful team. Coach, we'll go over here on our right-hand side on the second row. You have a question? No? All right. Let's go back over here on the left side here, third row. Good morning, Coach Saban. Uh, Scotty from Offscript. There's been a seismic shift with HBCUs and their, and their popularity, but you also have FBS uh, programs playing them. LSU is playing Southern. You have Notre Dame stepping out and playing Tennessee State. Could we ever see an Alabama playing an Alabama State or an Alabama A&M down the line? And a second part to that is, how have FCS systems become feeders to Power 5 programs as well as the transfer portal? Yeah, well, I think that um, I certainly can see um, we've tried to be very supportive. Um, you know, Ms. Ferry's on the Board of Trustees at Stillman College, and um, I've always been an advocate of uh, playing in-state schools uh, because I think it sort of helps them, you know, raise their level and their ability to compete, which obviously if you do that, you uh, also contribute to how successful the players, you know, in those organizations can be. Uh, so I would be very much in favor, you know, of that. Uh, I do think that um, some of the really, really good players, I think it's going to work both ways. Is I think some of the really good players in that league are going to have opportunities to go other places. But I also think that um, there will be some players that come back to that league uh, that will also be able to enhance uh, their value uh, as players because of the opportunity that will be created for them by playing at that level. So um, all good things. Coach, we're going to go over on our right side alongside the aisle. Good morning, Coach. Ken Caps from uh, Football Writers Association of America. There are going to be four student reporters from the Alabama Communications Department and four student reporters from the University of Texas Communications Department covering the game in Austin on September the 10th. These are brand new reporters covering this big of a game. What would be your advice and tips for them? <laughs> um, you know, first of all, I would say that there's nothing in my job description that would indicate that I'm qualified to answer that. <laughs> but, um, Look, I think fair and honest always works, um, and I think it's a great opportunity for these young people to, you know, be able to cover a game of significance, and Texas has a great program, and uh, Sark's done a really good job there, and um, it's going to be a very challenging game for us, and uh, I think that it'll, that if these young folks can, um, you know, report the facts, as well as be fair and honest in their assessments of how things go. I think that's as much as anyone could ask from a professional standpoint. Coach, we'll go in the section right in front of you about four rows back. Good morning, Coach. Johnny Ballpark Franks with Franks Media in Nashville and Huntsville. Before you arrived at Alabama, the program never had a Heisman Trophy a winner. And with Bryce Young's win, now four, most in the SEC, in terms of the winners and the the finalists, what has that success meant as far as winning the award and how it translates to success with your program? Well, I think it kind of goes both ways. Uh, I think um, the success that the program has had uh, probably lends itself to um, more attention that our players get. 
uh, whether it's to make All-American or win national awards like the Outland Trophy or the Nagurski or you know, the Heisman or whatever it is. And uh, because these guys um, all were great players and had great seasons uh, on a very successful team that got a lot of national exposure and recognition, um, their performance was rewarded. Uh, their positive performance was rewarded um, because they got a lot of exposure because of success the team had. So, you know, I think it kind of goes both ways in terms of, um, you know, players being recognized. And we're, we're, we're always very grateful uh, that, you know, our players do get recognized in a positive way uh, because I do think those things create value for them and their future, and uh, that's obviously the goal. Okay, we're going to go right here in front of me, Lane, right in front, right behind you. There you go. Hey there, Coach Saban. This is Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. I've noticed that when you were talking about the key, you know, building blocks for a program, you mentioned personal development, academic development, and creating value for their football career, but you didn't mention NIL. And I know that that's something that you've, you know, kind of weighed in on earlier this off season, but, um, you know, what is your view on how Alabama can, you know, get involved in that space just because it is changing dynamics in college football, you know, whether you like them or not? Yeah, well, I don't dislike name, image, and likeness. I'm all for the players. I want players to do well. Uh, our players did extremely well last year. They made over $3 million in name, image, and likeness. So uh, I'm, all, I'm all for the players, you know, being able to um, do as well as they can and use their name, image, and likeness to create value uh, for themselves. And, um, you know, we have a great brand at Alabama, uh, so players are certainly – their value there is going to be enhanced because of the value that our brand can help them create. Um, but, you know, the thing that I have, um, you know, sort of expressed uh, not concerns about, but um, there's got to be some uniformity and protocol of how name, image, and likeness is implemented. Uh, and I think there's probably a couple factors that are important in that. Uh, how does this impact um, competitive balance, you know, in college athletics? Um, and is there transparency to maintain fairness uh, across the board in terms of college athletics? And how do we protect the players? Because there's more and more people that are trying to get between, you know, the player and the money. Um, and in the NFL, they have guidelines for agents because the NFL Players Association sort of has rules and regulations about how they, um, you know, should, um, you know, professionally, you know, help the players. Uh, so that's, you know, something that, you know, we really want to make sure that our players are not being misguided in any way. And um, the biggest concern is, you know, how does this impact and affect recruiting uh, because on the recruiting trail right now there's a lot of people using this as um, inducements to go to their school by making promises as to whether they may or may not be able to keep uh, in terms of um, you know what players are doing and I, I think that um, you know that is what can create um, a competitive balance issue uh, between the haves and the have-nots, uh, and we're one of the haves. So you know, don't don't think that what I'm saying is a concern that we have in Alabama because um, we're we're one of the haves. But everybody in college football cannot uh, do these things relative to uh, how they raise money in a collective or whatever, and how they distribute money to players. Um, so. Um, those are the concerns that I have in terms of, you know, how do we place guidelines uh, around this uh, so that uh, we, we can maintain a competitive balance. There, there is no competitive sport anywhere that doesn't have guidelines on um, how they maintain some kind of competitive balance. And um, I think that's important to college football. I think it's important to fans. Uh, that's why they have rules in the NFL where you have a salary cap, um, you have um, 
a difficult schedule if you have a successful season. You draft later. Uh, if you have a successful season, you draft early. If you have um, um, an unsuccessful season, and all these things are created so that there is competitive balance, uh, which is great for the game and it's great for fans. So um, name, image, and likeness is not an issue for us at Alabama. Um, and our players, I think, did better than anybody in the country last year. Okay, we have time for a couple more. We're going to go over here on the right side in the middle, Coach. Right. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. Uh, you're in the rare position of not only having a Heisman winning quarterback, but having him return for another season. Can you talk about what kind of things you guys are coaching Bryce Young on the year after he won college football's highest award? And then in terms of offensive line, what kind of progress have you guys made this spring, a season after giving up a pretty high pressure rate on the quarterback? Yeah, well, I think that's one of the biggest challenges is the offensive line rebuild that we need to do. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about the coach that we have at that position. You know, Coach Woodruff has done a really good job with the players and relationship building and fundamental progress. Um, we do have some new players that may contribute to that that weren't there in the spring. So uh, that's something that we'll have to sort of assess, you know, in fall camp. Uh, and I think that, you know, one of the most important things for Bryce or any player who has success is um, to understand that, you know, success is not a continuum. Um, you know, you, you, you have to continue to, um, success is momentary. Uh, so if you're going to continue to have success, you still, you, you have to stay focused on the things that you need to do to improve, to pre prepare, uh, to lead, uh, to impact and affect other people around you. And, you know, Bryce has shown every indication that he's got a willingness to do all those things. Uh, he's a perfectionist in terms of what he uh, wants to do and what he wants to accomplish. And, um, you know, so far I've been pleased with uh, the way he's been able to maintain the mindset that you need to do to continue to improve and, you know, make progress as a player. We have time for two more. We're going to start over here on our right, Coach, second row, Glenn. Hey, Coach. Um, do, do you see the SEC having 18 or 20 teams in the next few years? How do you think that would, would look? And would that mean a 10-game league schedule, maybe? maybe? I have no idea. Um, Glenn, you've been around me for 20 years now, and you know I don't like to answer hypothetical questions which that could be as hypothetical as any I've ever been asked. Um, I do think there is some tendency to, um, as current events sort of indicate, um, that mega conferences, you know, may be something in the future. Um, it's not my job or my role uh, to understand the dynamics of uh, what's in the best interest of college football, the SEC, uh, other conferences in terms of how they expand. But this has always been something that has happened. Uh, I know one thing for sure is we have a great league. Um, we've made two really positive additions to our league um, that are going to come online in a few years. Uh, I think there's a lot of underlying dynamics from a business standpoint that could impact and affect, you know, how this happens, if it does happen in the future. Um, but for right now, uh, you know, we have 14 teams in our league for the next couple of years, and we have some really, really good teams in our league. Uh, it's a very competitive league. Um, you got to be on task each and every week that you play, and, you know, that's kind of what we're trying to stay focused on. But. Uh, you know, that question is probably a better question for Greg uh, Sankey or uh, conference commissioners who um, maybe are looking at, you know, what's in the best interest of their league in the future. And I'm sure they would say, you know, maybe yes and maybe no, uh, because who knows what those circumstances may uh, have an impact and effect in a positive way on each and every league and on college football uh, in general. But I do think if we move toward the mega conference, again, that whole thing about competitive balance is going to be in question. Uh, and look, I'm not here to say 
we should have it or we shouldn't have it. But if we have two 20 team leagues, um, you know, how's that going to impact all the people that are not in those leagues? Uh, that's a question for all of you to speculate and answer on. I, I really can't speculate on that. Okay, we'll take one final question right in front of me, Coach. Three rows. Kirk. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Nick, I don't know if it was a down year for you since you didn't win the national championship, but you also lost a couple games to former assistants, which you never do. Uh, when you self-scout, did you see anything in common that teams might use as a blueprint to try to beat Alabama other than build one of the greatest defenses ever? Well, I, I think that, uh, first of all, all the coaches who have had opportunities to go on and uh, be head coaches in Division I, uh, I'm very proud of. Um, I think, um, you know, they, they all did an outstanding job for us. Uh, they all had goals and aspirations that motivated them to do an outstanding job because they wanted to be head coaches. Uh, and I'm happy for them and their family that they got that opportunity. Um, you know, sooner or later, um, these people that get these opportunities would get in situations where um, they had a chance to have nationally recognized, nationally powerful, whatever you want to call it, top ranked teams. Uh, like Georgia was last year, like Texas will be, I'm sure, uh, very soon with Sark being the head coach there on uh, the staff that he has and the job that they're doing. Um, so this is not something that uh, is surprising to me. Um, you know, the, 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 a lot of people are at really, really good schools. They've done a really, really good job. Um, they've used, you know, their own personal imprint uh, to um, maybe take a few things that they learned that we do that helped us be successful uh, along with their imprint of what they want to do so that they can have successful programs. So uh, this is not a surprise to me. Uh, it was, um, you, you know, sort of expected, you know, actually. Uh, and I'm happy to see each and every one of those guys do extremely well. Not extremely well against Alabama, but extremely well. So um, I'm kind of proud of the fact that um, there are some of our coaches who have got some of the most successful programs in the country. Coach, thank you for your time this morning. All right, good. Thank you all again. I appreciate what you do for college football and all of our players and the self-gratification that you provide for them. So thank you very much.